there we go. <laughs> so uh, we've we published journals, well, since before the Society was founded, Physical Review dates back to 1893, and uh, now is um, 17 journals, mostly under the Physical Review or PRX uh, grouping, or uh, re Reviews of Modern Physics is a big review journal. Um, uh, our 20,000 articles a year makes us about the fourth largest publisher. We uh, are close to the uh, British Institute of Physics publishing, but uh, sometimes they publish more than we do. <laughs> so either third or fourth. Um, physics, astronomy, mathematical physics. And uh, we have an in-house uh, submissions and review system. And also um, for the online journals, uh, we do use external vendors for production of uh, chats XML and the uh, published PDF files. Um, so as far as institution records go, uh, we started, <laughs> we have a database that goes back to 1978, not all the way to 1893, but, um, uh, back then we, uh, we started requiring, well, not requiring, but using, uh, institutions to track corresponding authors. So one, there would be one institution associated with, with the paper. And that was basically to, to have a way to contact them, um, through their through their institution if we needed to uh and to consolidate i guess address information that kind of thing uh so that gradually grew over the years and around 2008 uh you'll see we have i put down modernize here that's um the start of a discussion at aps on how to do a bit better with what we were doing with institutions um there were editorial reasons also to uh to track institutions because the editors prefer not to send a paper for review to somebody at the same institution as one of the authors. Um, so what we what we kind of worked on was getting a more complete institution database. We were we were probably only capturing about half of institutions for about half of papers. Uh, so try to get more complete. And then uh, around 2015, we got to the point where we we decided. Well, we 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 set up a a internal institution database um, uh, that was a um, I mean we we already had an institution database but we set up one that was uh, able to be used in the submission process as authors selected their um, their uh, their affiliations um, and we started acquiring that for not only corresponding author but all the co-authors. Um, if if there was a real institution they're associated with, they can always select <laughs> no affiliation if they need to. Uh, Twenty seventeen, we uh, merged things, our, our database with Grid, and twenty twenty two is when Roar um, was was uh, we we replaced the Grid re re entries with Roar, as that was uh, starting to be um, well, necessary because <laughs> Grid was no longer being updated publicly. Um, and the count you'll see on this graph, this chart is showing uh, the number of uh, distinct institutions used as affiliations in our published articles in that in each year. So it's grown much faster than our publications have, uh, because we're trying to capture all of the institutions, not just a small portion. Um, so that that uh, unifying that database with Grid and then with Roar um, was. Uh, a bit of a project. Uh, we had to, we had the goal of of not losing the data that we already had, um, but also you know adopting a new standard, um, and still allowing creating our own entries where needed because uh, we do we do tend to get either very small uh, things that uh, companies and independent things that um, probably don't or they aren't in row or they don't qualify or maybe they just haven't been added yet. Um, so we, we do still create our own new entries, but most of the ones we need are in the standard database uh, in, in Roar. So uh, we actually went through Orgref first, which was a data salon um, organization registry. Um, and then they mapped things to grid. So that was our initial relationship set there. Um, we have on the order of a thousand entries that are not mapped to grid that we actually use. Um, and, and as I said, we, we still heading them. Uh, in fact, as we've gotten the, 
to this process, uh, there seems to be an acceleration in adding new institutions on our end, which probably uh, I hope will, will come to an end soon, but just because our, our staff are being much more careful about um, uh, making sure the affiliations are correct. Um, so uh, yeah, when when uh, people look at these affiliations, they'll, they'll see basically a merged view of both both data sets. Um, and uh, roughly quarterly, we we match to the latest stump from Roar. I, I'd like to do it more often, but we haven't quite managed that yet. And then there's also subscriber data, which uh, I won't get into, but we we've done some work on that, and hopefully we'll be more complete soon. This is a um, a, a view of uh, what the authors see. There's basically a, a widget uh, attached to their submission. They um, they're asked to add affiliations, and there's a bunch of text there that they probably don't usually read. But basically, they they have to. It's an autocomplete system, and um, uh, we added a filter by country, and then actually by city as well if uh, they select a country. Um, so you can see the we're not the only American PH organization in or uh, <laughs> during the review process. Um, so the authors typically submit a PDF file, um, and uh, the um, our, our staff look at that PDF and check that the stated affiliations actually match what's in the PDF, because sometimes authors just pick something random. <laughs> um, so here's a, an example with a list of affiliations. You'll see this five separate affiliations listed, uh, or at least five lines of affiliations. And then the um, on the bottom is, is kind of the view that uh, is showing our internal database and what's, what those things are related to um, with our data. So, so our staff just make sure that those things match as far as they can. Uh, and it goes out to production. Um, we provide a metadata file uh, and an API for our vendors, production vendors, to um, uh, make sure the metadata is correct on on the in the XML. Um, and so, particularly for aff affiliations, um, in the XML, we we list them separately from the authors with an internal ID, uh, the institution name, and and the ROAR ID. Um, and then there's there's a link between the the authors, the contributors, and the um, affiliations through those internal IDs. So here's an example of what it looks like in the XML. Um, uh, so this is yeah, University of Iceland. There's Aurora for University of Iceland, and it, um, yeah, one of the things that there's a bit of a challenge, and we get a lot of <laughs> we've had a lot of feedback since we started doing this, uh, is matching that ROAR ID, uh, matching the, the text of the, um, putting it in the right place, I guess, in, in these things, because you, you want it on the right affiliation. Um, so there was an example just this morning of a, uh, a, a facility at Cornell, which was used as an affiliation, but the affiliation didn't actually mention Cornell University, and the ROAR we had was Cornell University. So where does that go in the uh, production XML is a question. And we haven't actually answered all these questions yet. We're we're still working things out. Um, but yeah, so there's a bit of communication back and forth with our production vendors on this now. Uh, but we went live with it back in May. Um, and so you can actually see it on our uh, journal article pages. Um, you see the author lists, link to ORCID if there is one, and then each of the affiliations, the, the blue there is a link to the ROAR page. Um, and it took us a little bit longer, but uh, we started positing in Crossref at the end of May and backfilled all of the ones that we had. So, uh, so that's done. So I just want to recognize <laughs> we've been uh, eagerly uh, supporting ROAR for a long time. Um, and uh, but uh, we we have a, a good team of people who were involved, and this isn't everybody, but these are some of those who are most uh, most involved. Uh, and Colin is one of the ones on the call right now. Uh, but I'd like to thank everybody for their work on this. And if you have questions, uh, please you can put it in the chat now or, or send me an email. Thanks.